Hello, my friends. Nico here, the founder of Neural Frames. Today, I want to introduce you Neural Frames, a platform to create audio reactive AI animations like these ones. <laughs> We will go through every button that is there and I will try to keep it under 10 minutes. Let's go. Okay, so when starting a new project on Neural Frames, we are immediately confronted with an important decision and that is we need to choose an AI model. The AI model is the cornerstone of our AI animation. It converts text to images and also images to images. And the way it exactly does it is for each of these AI models different. Neural Frames currently offers nine AI models depending on your subscription level. We separate these into four all-rounder models. These can just depict anything you want. And, and five specialist models, which are particularly good in, in specific situations. For instance, analog diffusion is great in analog photography. So real cartoon is good for cartoonish 3D type um, images. Then we have another feature called custom models. A lot of our users love that. Here you can actually um, upload images of either a person or some style and train your own custom AI model on that style. We have a tutorial about that here. A lot of people love that. A lot of people also, for instance, render their own images in Midjourney or other text-to-image generators and then train their own custom AI model on this style. So they have their own unique AI model that nobody else has in the world. And note that there's two models here with the suffix XL. XL is a different architecture than the, the other AI models. It's much bigger, it produces cl clearer images, but it's also slower. But in particular, Juggernaut XL is an amazing AI model that is really stunning for all kinds of situations. My go-to model is DreamShaper. It's very um, versatile, it's a clear all-rounder, it can do anything you want. And also today, we want to go with DreamShaper. We can upload an image or create a new one, I usually like to create my first by itself. Let's go with hieroglyphs, painting, Egyptian style elephants, something like that, I don't know. We have the negative prompt here, and the negative prompt you can write what you don't want to see. So at the moment it says out of frame, low res, text, error, cropped, right? So all of these things that you don't want to see are in here by default, but we can also take them out. It is often good to use the negative prompt in situations where you have an object and you cannot get rid of it, but you really want to get rid of it, then you put it in there, or you have some watermark or, or something. We have an artist selection here. You can select some artists that you want, or some multiple. It's just where it, it will add this to the prompt, just as a helper for you. You can store your prompts also, both negative prompt and positive prompt, and load them also later on. A lot of people like that. But now we go with the 16 to 9 format and just render that. Okay, the first frame is rendered. We can select between one of the four. I would choose this one. And now we come to the heart of Neural Frames, the video editor. The video editor is split into four components. We have the app bar here with all kinds of project related icons. And we have the inspector, we have the preview window, and we have the timeline. It's very similar to a normal video editor, but the difference is it's not a video editor, it's a video generation tool. So let's start with the app bar. Here is a save as icon, which will basically duplicate the project. Currently, the project is stored with every click on render, not in between. So if you click here save as, it will, it will duplicate the state of the project of the last render. And then you have two projects, separate ones, and, and you can try out different things in, in these two projects. Here's the rendering time you have left on your subscription. We have a BPM mode where the time axis of the timeline actually goes to bars and not seconds. And you can choose the BPM here. Let's see, now it's seconds. We have a snap to grid. The snap to grid actually locks the, the timeline to seconds. And in BPM mode, it locks it to half bars. And you can switch the tooltips on and off. And we have an undo and, and redo. Again, this undo is render-wise. So it, it goes to the last render or previous render. This can be useful and you can go back quite far in this project. Also, we can rename the project, for instance, Elephants. Good. In the inspector, you can choose between different presets. You can look at them here. And we have again the icons that we've already seen before. We have prompt and negative prompt also. 
Now we have a lot of sliders here. Let's go through them one by one. The flicker determines how much the animation will flicker from frame to frame. The short version is if you go down, it will not flicker that much, but you need to use a high strength. And I also would recommend actually to use no edge echo there and just no camera movement. Okay. And then you can have things morphing into each other very nicely. With a high flicker, this is the standard mode where we come from. It's the new frames default mode. All the camera motions are enabled. The strength determines how much new things the AI will add from frame to frame. So a high, high strength, the, the images will look very different from frame to frame and low strength will, will make the images not look so different from frame to frame. Usually a higher strength has better image quality, but also is more flickering. The smoothing frame is, is how smooth your, your images will be. It will basically add interpolation frames between two AI outputs. Use a high smooth only with a high strength. Edge Echo keeps the edges in the images the same. You can also read it as shape stability. Tile Echo is a trippy effect that generates these weird tiles in the images. Use it with care, but it can create awesome effects. And then you have all the camera motion parameters here. You can con fully control the camera. Now, when we upload a song, I made a song with Suno, or Suno made a song for me, depending on how you look at it. When uploading it, Neuroframes automatically extracts the stems of your song, the individual components of it, and then we have the individual components here. And uh, this becomes important because now we can create audio reactive animations by doing the following. We have this other um, row here in the timeline where we can add modulations. So we can modulate certain parameters of these ones. Any of these parameters we can modulate by applying either an oscillator. So for instance, here we would have a square wave that modulates the strength or the zoom by an amplitude with a frequency, okay? You can also choose different waveforms, sine wave, we can make it longer, shorter, we can move it around. But we can also select audio and then for instance have the kick drum affect the flicker by let's say minus 100 or even higher. This amplitude is in the units of whatever this parameter is. For instance flicker is in percent, right? So you see it at 100. So with this value it will go down. Then we can add another modulation, let's say on the snare, on the snare, an effect on the strength. This is always a cool effect because it will make an audio reactive vibe here. Okay, now what we want to do is we want to add a second prompt to the timeline. Let's say we don't want elephants now, but maybe cats. And also we have this button here, pimp my prompt, that will enhance the prompt just make it a bit more readable for the AI. Okay, and now I want to show you something. We have the preset infinite rotation here, so this will revolve around the object. Let's say for this prompt here, we want to change the direction. So first it rotates this way, and then it should rotate this way. So what we do is, we just flip this, and we flip this, yeah, so other direction. And we have this gray box in between two boxes. This will interpolate all the values that are here, from one box to the other. So we will slowly, you will see that we will slowly move from one movement to the next one. Let's just render this and then you will understand what I mean. Look at this beautiful cat. We can go to the first frame and hit spacebar to play. That's cool. What, what I wanted to show you, this transition box, right? It rotates rightwards, but then slowly stops the movement. The prompt kind of becomes a cat. Inter this is not really a cat, it's a mixture between cat and elephant because it also interpolates the prompt here in this gray box. So it moves rightwards, slowly stops, and then starts moving leftwards, yeah? So this is really just a transition crossfade for all of these settings. Now you also see that the modulation has an effect, although I have to say the, the effect is not the strongest, but you can see here something weird is happening to the cat, right? Something, some weird effect is coming. And this is from this bump here that we put to the flicker. Here I find it a little bit less pronounced. 
in general, it is good to exaggerate with these values a little bit. If you put modulation on rhythmic elements, put high values here, higher than you think you need. Something else that we can do is we can add a new box and we have this button here that I really like and I think a lot of people don't know it. It proposes the next prompt based on the last prompts. It's just a smart assistant. If, if you're lazy, you can just add new prompts here. It's very fast. Pyramids, templates, adding all kinds of stuff. That's cool. And also what, what we can do is we add different modulation elements here. For instance, on the kick again, let's say we want to have a tile echo there. I said already a tile echo is a bit of a trippy effect. And also on the kick, we can maybe zoom in. 10. We have the turbo mode here. The turbo mode renders four times as fast as non-turbo mode. You can switch on and off at any point in the, uh, if you want. But also the quality suffers a little bit. One more thing that we can do is uh, we have this hard cut feature. So for instance, let's say from here on, we, we don't want this natural evolution of the frames. We want actually a hard cut. So we will click here. Then we can again upload a frame. We can also select one of the already rendered frames as a starting frame or we render a new one. Let's say cave drawing of a Buddha statue. I don't know, something. And we render it again. Cool. And then we just use one. And you will see that there's a thumbnail here appearing and actually here there will not be the natural progression of the frames, but instead then this new frame and then basically uh, interpolation from there. And yeah, that's about it. When you're done, you click here for an export you can upscale the video up to 4K if you're new in Angel. And I will render this, show you the full result, and then see you then. Happy rendering.